So hello, we are now still on on the topics of cost, volume, and profit. And as a continuation of cost concepts, we are now discussing variable costing approach on presentation of uh, income statement. So this is part of our seventh module in management, accounting, and control. So and here we will solve a sample problem as well pertaining to variable and absorption costing statements. What is variable costing? Now, variable costing is the method of presentation of uh, costs in the income statement wherein variable manufacturing costs are the only ones regarded as product costs. That is the main difference here. Uh, why is this something that is, uh, that is considered in presentation of uh, income statement? Later on, we will find out the uh, the advantages and disadvantages of using this, uh, this approach as a mode of presentation of uh, costs in the income statement. So, as you remember, if you would remember on your uh, cost management courses earlier, um, we, we group costs according to, according to which product they pertain to whether they are controllable or not. Now here, we will apply some of the concepts that we have learned on the earlier module on cost concepts on how we analyze these costs. So variable costing is highly help helpful for when we are analyzing uh, incurrence of costs and uh, when we determine uh, whether or not to push through in a decision on whether costs can be controlled by the department or not. Now, the use of variable costing method will highlight the uh, contribution margin of a product and therefore facilitates managerial decision-making process. What is contribution margin? That is the, uh, the inflow that each unit of sale, uh, when we pertain to contribution margin per unit, that is the inflow that a unit of sale contributes to the initially recovery of fixed costs and subsequently to the increase in the profits of an organization. So contribution margin as a concept is not acceptable in the standards. However, it is a concept that is very useful in decision-making purposes because this, uh, on a per-unit basis, we are able to identify how much benefit we will achieve once a unit is sold, uh, a unit of product of the company is sold. Now, what are the advantages of using the variable costing approach as presentation in the income presentation of costs in the income statement? First, it shows separately those costs that can be traced to and controlled by each strategic business unit. Remember that. Uh, we can we can classify costs as controllable controllable or non-controllable they can be controllable or non-controllable depending on the circumstances so in this case uh, variable costs are controllable in such a way that the manage the manager or the strategic business unit can control the incurrence of such costs depending on the increase or decrease of units produced However, fixed manufacturing costs are not affected by the increase or decrease in the units produced in a product or in a given strategic business unit. Therefore, the increase or decrease of the units produced does not necessarily give an impact to the, to the, to the total fixed costs. However, remember that um, fixed manufacturing overhead is a cost that is allocated we have we have discussed this earlier the difference of assignment and allocation of costs where direct costs are assigned on their cost pools uh, manufacturing overhead at some extent when a driver cannot be specifically identified for that cost incurrence we allocate them on on units produced Therefore, um, the increase in 
units produced in a strategic business unit would result to a decrease in cost per unit to be allocated on those products since fixed cost does not change in relation to the units produced. That would have an effect in general in our income recognition as well. Now, we are trying to highlight here that uh, we are trying to highlight here the recognition uh, the the recognition of a contribution margin uh, of a product in such a way that they will not be affected by the number of units produced because if we want uh, a strategic matching of this would be uh, when when we when we try to produce uh, too many units more than what we can sell that would result in lower cost per unit actually that is that is that is a management technique that we call cost leadership uh, economies of scale as well but in here we try to focus more on the more on the return per unit that return per unit of sale that we can get rather than uh, managing our production so that we can we would be able able to produce the unit at a lower cost next would be net income using variable costing is not affected this was mentioned earlier by inventory levels because as mentioned when we have more units in inventory than previously that would result definitely in a in a higher income in our absorption approach as compared to the variable approach statement later on in our sample problem we will have that analysis variable costing data are used in cvp analysis or the cost volume profit analysis in the cost volume profit analysis we analyze the impact of change in cost in volume to the overall profit of the organization this will be further discussed on forthcoming chapters now what are the disadvantages of uh, using or presenting our statements using the variable costing or direct costing approach it encourages a short-sighted approach to profit planning at the expense of long-run situation we have to consider uh, fixed and variable expenses controllable and non-controllable expenses in the short run we cannot control fixed costs or fixed expenses but in the long run like the purchase of equipment although it is something uh, depreciation cannot be controlled in the short run but the purchase of equipment in the long run is something that we can control every cost in an organization can be controlled it's only a matter of your perspective on the time to which it was incurred so in the long run all costs can be controlled all costs are variable all costs all costs can can change in relation to uh, to our operations however um, for variable costing direct costing analysis we are we are we are focusing on the thought of recovering first our fixed cost Remember, the analysis in contribution margin is uh, each unit sold, uh, so contribution margin per unit would be the contribution of that, of that item sold initially to the recovery of the fixed cost because ultimately, when you earn enough contribution margin to cover all your fixed costs, that would be the time when we earn profits. Because by the time that you have earned all your fixed costs, that would be a situation that we call a break-even point. Now, we will discuss that on the forthcoming chapters. But variable costing, and let's us see how the effect of uh, each unit of items sold would be on the recovery of fixed costs, then subsequently to earning profit however that that vision when we consider it first recover fixed costs and then that is when you can make profit that is a very short-sighted approach on on managing our business because as long as we recover first the costs the fixed expenses we are already good we are already earning profit but that is not our ultimate goal in the long run 
Next, it tends to give, uh, this, is, this is mentioned, tends to give the impression that variable costs are recovered first, then fixed costs, and then profits. So in here, we sort of imagine situations like, uh, of course, if you would deduct first the variable cost to arrive with contribution margin, it's as if uh, that is the priority of uh, priority of costs being recovered, then following the fixed cost before we arrive with the last level of the statement, which is the profits. So we will only have a positive net figure at, at the bottom of the statement when we recover first. Definitely, you would recover variable costs because variable costs should be always be higher than your selling cost, selling selling price, because ultimately you will never earn profits if your variable expenses are higher than your than your selling price. And as mentioned, variable costing statements are not acceptable for external reporting and tax purposes because. Our standard implies that we need to apply full cost approach or the absorption approach which states that all production costs or costs that are directly attributable to the production should be capitalized as part should be included in the cost of inventories. Now we go to absorption costing or the absorption approach of presenting the income statement. So, method of product costing in which all manufacturing costs, fixed and variable, are treated as product or inventoriable costs. Fixed manufacturing costs are distributed to all inventory items. Later on, we will have an analysis of this. How would this affect your, uh, how would this affect your financial statements? We would have the differences between variable and absorption costing. As to the treatment of operating costs, for variable costing, the product costs would be direct material, direct labor, and variable factory overhead. While in absorption costing, all factory overhead are considered as uh, product cost. All others are considered according to how they were considered before. Remember that variable marketing, selling and marketing costs, even though they are variable, they are period costs still because you will incur them and then you will spend the, you will recognize them as expense outright the only difference is uh, the variable variable marketing costs are directly attributable to the uh, are directly linked incurrence of such are directly linked to the units or hours incurred on that note well fixed marketing costs have always been period costs so they are Fixed selling and administrative costs are also fixed costs. So they are still fixed, uh, are fixed, I mean, period costs. So they are still period costs on this situation. So they are, they have not been moved in such a way. However, in consideration of contribution margin, you need to deduct selling, variable selling and administrative costs on the sales price to arrive with the contribution margin. Now, Fixed factory overhead is a product cost on uh, vari on absorption costing. Well, it is considered as a period cost on variable costing. How would that differ? It means when you incur the fixed factory overhead, you will deduct it in total on variable costing statements. While in absorption costing statements, you need to allocate the entire amount to all units produced in the given period. So when you do that, if there is an ending inventory, there would definitely be a difference between variable and absorption costing statements. Now, as to the net operating income, which one would be higher? Now, that depends. If there would be a higher ending inventory, now, if, invent if the units produced would be higher than the units sold, then the income under absorption costing would be higher. So if production is lower than the sales, meaning there is, an, there is beginning inventory, definitely your income 
under variable costing would be higher because you would have more more fixed expense fixed factory overhead to recognize on your absorption costing so production when production is higher than sales what would happen your income under absorption costing would be higher but if production is equal to sales then you would have you would have um, you would most definitely have uh, equal income on both on both on both statements now that depends on the beginning inventory amount on whether the spread of invent spread of cost on the prior period is higher now as to the amount or the cost of inventory for variable costing and absorption costing which inventory costs would be higher which inventory value would be higher is it the variable statement or the absorption statements definitely regardless of how you would see it the absorption costing statements would have higher inventory cost presented in their statement of financial position to further to further discuss this situation let us answer this problem